Hey, Bjorn Strong, I'm here. Welcome back to RimWorld Science. I said I wouldn't do anything until Alpha 17, and here I am. It's not Alpha 17 yet, but this is going to be a little episode on mining and a couple of mining techniques, and nothing in here should change at all between now and Alpha 17, so it shouldn't go obsolete anytime soon. But what I want to look at today is different ways of... Uh, efficiently doing exploratory mining, mining to try to find resources. And in order to kind of get some information about the best way to do this, I went ahead and looked at a bunch of different maps and the resources in those maps. Now, I was worried for one thing, if maybe the distribution of resources depended at all on the difficulty level or the kind of biome chosen. And Rimworlder Many, who is very sensitively inclined and all around good guy and knows way more about coding than I do, delve into the code and had a little rummage around said, nope, the way that uh, resources are distributed on a map has nothing at all to do with the biome or the difficulty level. It does depend on the type of map. There are four types of maps you can choose. There's the flat map, the small hills, large hills, and mountainous. And uh, so that, that does make a bit of a difference. And we can look right here. Uh, inside a mountainous map. And once you have a map, you can then come with the dev tools to see exactly how many resources they, there are. Now, what you do is we turn off drawing the fog and we'll also uh, turn on the inspector so that when we hover over, it tells us this is mineable steel, this is uh, mineable components. And I went through five mountainous maps and four maps of each of the other kind. And you'll notice like how each of these uh, these resources, they come in a chunk of various sizes. So I counted how many chunks were on each map of each type of resource and how big each of those chunks were. And I found some kind of interesting information. By and large, uh, there wasn't enough plasteel, uranium, jade, or gold on any of the maps to have any really kind of statistically significant results. Uh, Above and beyond, across the board, steel and components were always the, the most abundant by, by quite a lot. And so I'll just give you those, although all of my data uh, is available for download in the description if you want to have a look at it. But I found on the mountainous maps, there was an average of about 1,100 tiles of steel and about 180 tiles of components. Uh, the average, uh, that was about 38.2 uh, chunks of steel and 40 uh, about or so chunks of components with the average steel chunk size being about 30 and the average component chunk size being about four and a half. Now, those chunk sizes remain the same uh, throughout the other three kinds of maps. They average, the, the steel always kind of averaged around 30 and the components kind of always averaged around four and a half, but the number of chunks did go down. So in large hills, there were 30, an average of um, 30 steel chunks and 27-ish component chunks for a total of 950 tiles on average of steel, 123 tiles on average of uh, components. That went down to 22 and 21 chunks respectively for the small hills at 700 uh, steel tiles and 100 component tiles and a mere 317 tiles of components or uh, 10 chunks of, of steel I mean I was steel and 38 tiles 39 tiles of components and almost no, eight and a half chunks of steel on the, the small maps and those numbers might change a little bit in Alpha 17 because of the roads and the uh, rivers, but but on, by and large, the underlying dynamics of how those get created aren't. So that's what we have to look at. And the thing that's going to interest us most is the difference, uh, the average chunk sizes. So there's some general things we can kind of notice. One thing we can notice is that um, you know, the chunks tend to be kind of blobby, for one thing. So if the seal chunks kind of average around 30 or so, that's more than 25 tiles, and uh, they're, they're all kind of blobby. So by and large, a five by five square is gonna hit that that chunk somewhere or another. And uh, so similarly with the components, they're all kind of blobby. 
in all the time, I've never seen a line of four components. I've seen three kind of like one, two, three in an L shape. Otherwise, it'll be like a square, sometimes a cross, but almost always a square uh, or a square with like a little extra on. Uh, other things just to note, gold, uranium, and jade could be as small as just one tile, or they could be as large as six, sometimes even eight. Plasteel would tend to come in... Uh, chunks of a when it showed up it didn't show up on every map when it showed up in chunks of around uh, 20 or so and uh, here's one right here yeah this is a reasonably large uh, chunk that's kind of standard plasteel size and silver most maps would have at least one maybe even two to three chunks of silver and those would average around like 12 to 15 but I want, those details aren't quite as important the important thing is understanding that there are different kind of chunk sizes that go with uh, different kinds of resources now why does that matter well it's because when you're trying to find resources by mining uh, you want to you want to kind of balance it out so you get you find as many resources with as few blocks mined as possible. And so if you're looking for a particular resource, knowing the kind of sizes of the chunks they tend to come in tells you how like wide or narrow to cast your net. Let me like, show you what I mean with the example of a few different ways of doing some exploratory mining. So right here, we've got a mine where we've got a bunch of strips and there's just kind of two squares between each one. Now, this is a really great uh, for coverage. You're going to be able to see every single tile on either side of this but it's an you know it's a very small region you get for for four um you know lines of lines of cutting now here there's three lines of cutting with these little kind of spurs coming out but we'll see this actually gives you just as much res res coverage i mean as this does over here and here we have a kind of ladder shape and here's like a wider kind of ladder shape and these are actually very even though there's much bigger areas for each of these with m much fewer blocks actually being mined, these can be a very useful kind of pattern for finding the resources you're looking for. So in order to really see this, I've used the uh, extra planning mod. And what I've done is I've come here and for every tile that is directly exposed by, uh, uh, by mining, I've put a little green plan next to it. So let me explain what I mean. So if I go to destroy here, if I destroy that tile, I've directly exposed these four tiles right here. The other things that like if I mine to there, I could then mine those tiles. That's what all the green ones are. So you can see everything here is covered. Now, not everything here is covered, but the important thing to remember is that although these tiles aren't directly exposed, right? The ones that are angled, you can still see them. And so if there's a resource involved, you can see it. Like see right here. Uh, this tile is not directly exposed by this, but you can see that anyway from the corner. So we'll use the advanced planning tool also to put in, uh, color in where the corners are and see what we end up with after we do that. All right, so here we are. And now the yellows are the ones at an angle. And you can see just by going in and adding in like all the ones that were at an angle from something else that this whole region is covered. But there's a lot less cutting going on. There's only three shafts over here. There's four shafts over here. And this is even wider. This gets us more coverage. This gets us, let's measure it real quick. Uh, this gets us a shaft that's uh, 15 wide. This one is only 13 wide. And it's even got less, less kind of carving going on. Now, what about over here? So here we do not have a complete 100% coverage. So if you were looking for something like gold or uranium that can come in very, very small uh, chunks, you probably want to do something like this to make sure that you just don't miss any. But what if you're looking for components, which tend to come in chunks of like, you know, around this size, around kind of two by two? Well, notice that what's uncovered here is this kind of single snaking path. And there's nowhere, oh, I screwed up a little bit the pattern. This should be down one. But there's nowhere down here that actually can allow a four by four chunk in. Now it is like possible in principle for you to miss 
a three, like a little a little L-shaped thing, but it's pretty unlikely. So although this isn't like a guaranteed you'll find all of it, this kind of ladder pattern is very, very useful. And the pattern itself, just to, to verify, is um, there is a total of five, like between the shafts, there are, sorry, uh, four uh, squares between the two shafts. And then between each of the little shafts that kind of come out, there is seven squares. And then they're offset. So you have you know, seven and then you've got kind of in and out that way. And right here in the middle. So sorry, I screwed it up. Yeah. So there there's seven coming like that right in the middle there and then uh, on either side like that. Now, this is the same general pattern, only it's just spread out. So now you'll see we've got between the two shafts, we've got a total of, of seven uh, spaces. And then if we come down from uh, here down to here, there's 13. And the point of this one, here you're gonna miss like lots of components, but notice like there's no five by five square that you can fit in here without it being exposed. Every five by five square is going to hit. So it's the same situation here. It just, it's a bigger, a bigger kind of region. So given that the steel comes to tends to come in chunks that are about a 30, you can generally get a five by five. Again, it's not guaranteed. Just like you can fit a little, a little guy in here, you'll be able to fit a few chunks, but it's pretty likely you're going to hit any chunks of steel. And the more general recipe is that if you're looking for something that you want to like have it come in an N by N square, then the space between the shafts will be uh, N plus two. And the space between the little spurs that go out will be 2n plus 3. And that'll give you this kind of pattern where you can't hide inside one of those squares. So that gives you a very, very efficient way of trying to find resources rather than trying to dig all of this out. Now, I don't make any claims this is the best way to do it. You may have some more efficient way. I would love to hear it. Love to hear the kind of the, the geometry behind it and why it uh, helps you find re lots of resources with minimal amounts of digging. But that is what I have for today. That's all the time I have for today. As always, let me know what you want me to check in Alpha 17 when it comes out for a little RimWorld Science. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.